In this lecture we'll be looking at, or should I say hearing, some other wave phenomena. So in particular we'll be looking at sound levels, we'll be looking at the Doppler effect and then we'll be considering shock waves. This lecture covers textbook section 17.4, 17.7 and 17.8. So first of all a very quick recap of the most important points from last lecture. We showed that the equation of position relative to equilibrium for a particle which a sound wave was passing by is given by s of xt, that's the displacement from equilibrium, is equal to s max, the maximum displacement from equilibrium, cos kx minus omega t. The associated equation for a pressure is the change in pressure is equal to b, the bulk modulus s max k sine kx minus omega t. Now it's important to note that one is a cos function and one is a sine function. So these two things are out of phase by 90 degrees or pi on 2 radians. When one is zero, the other is a maximum or a minimum and vice versa. We derived the expression for the velocity of sound in different mediums. Velocity of sound is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus over the density. And it's related to the temperature through the equation the velocity is equal to 331 times the square root of 1 plus the temperature in degrees Celsius over 273. We show that the relationship between maximum pressure difference and displacement is the change in pressure is equal to rho, the density, V, the velocity, omega, which is 2 pi F, S max. And then finally, we finished up by showing these power and intensity relationships. The average power delivered by a sound wave is given by a half rho, the density, V, the velocity, omega squared A, this is the area, S squared max, the amplitude. So the intensity is equal to the average power over the area. Generally, as a sound wave travels through space, it travels at the same speed in all directions. So the surface area it ends up covering is in the shape of a sphere and so a is given by 4 pi r squared. Okay on to new material. Sound levels in decibels. The human ear can detect a very large range of intensities of sound from 10 to the minus 12 up to 1 watt per meter squared. We use a logarithmic to the base 10 scale to describe this large range. And so beta, which is the sound levels in decibels, is given by the expression 10 log i, the intensity, over i naught, the reference intensity. So in this equation, i is the intensity of sound in watts per meter squared. i naught is the reference intensity, which is the lowest sound the human ear can pick up, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. And beta is the sound level in decibels. To practice using this equation, you can try homework set 6 for Phys 1121 question 9 for Phys 1131 question 11. So to give you some idea about the kind of numbers we're dealing with, a nearby jet airplane is 150 decibels, jackhammer would be 130, a siren 120, and things which are very quiet, a mosquito is around about 40, a whisper is 30, Rustling leaves are around 10. Here's a question to try. Two identical machines are positioned the same distance from a worker. The intensity of sound delivered by each operating machine at the worker's location is 2 times 10 to the minus 7 watts per meter squared. Find the sound level heard by the worker when one machine is working. B. Find the sound level heard by the worker when two machines are working and see how many machines would need to be operating to double the sound level heard in A.